So in this section, we're on our notes, um, section 4.2, and we're going to start by talking about the significance of chromosome packaging, and then we're mainly going to focus on the actual steps within the cell cycle. So to start us off, what is the significance of chromosome packaging? So a couple things to take note of here is that a chromosome is going to be a condensed, condensed form of DNA. And the reason why we want to condense the DNA is because this actually ends up making it easier to move and to divide the copies. And when we talk about division in biology, just keep in mind that that means the same thing as replication or multiplication. So what you see here are actually two pictures of karyotypes. And in the two pictures of the karyotypes, we actually have something that's a little different. If you pay attention to what you see here that's different from both of them, is you'll actually see on the left single chromosomes. And on the right, you'll see doubled chromosomes. And again, both of these are pictures of what's known as a karyotype. We don't necessarily have to be able to read the karyotype right now, but we just need to be able to identify some different things that we see here. All chromosomes come in pairs, and those pairs come from your parents. And so you'll have one chromosome from mom and one chromosome from dad. And you'll have in humans 46 chromosomes total, which means you'll have 23 pairs. And so you'll get 23 from mom, 23 from dad, and they'll all pair up to make your 46 chromosomes total. Um, something that you should already be able to identify on the chromosomes is on the karyotype is right here, our 23rd pair of chromosomes do represent our sex chromosomes. And this is just something you should remember from Bio 1. And something else that you might remember is that at location 21 or pair 21, if we have an extra chromosome right there, that would actually um, give us Down syndrome. But the main thing here is that we see that you have singled chromosomes, and on this side you can see that they're doubled chromosomes. Obviously this is a more realistic picture, whereas this one is an illustration. Um, but you would actually still see the same thing, except they would look a little more faded and not as detailed right here. Um, so why would we have our chromosomes doubling? Our chromosomes will double or replicate to prepare for cell division. Okay, so they'll copy each other. And hopefully you remember that on either side here, these are identical sister chromatids. And so one side on the left and one side on the right will have identical information. A couple of other terms that we need to pay attention to is the idea of a homologous chromosome. Okay. A homologous chromosome is going to be the same size, same um, sequence of genes, but can have different 
alleles. So on here we might have a gene for eye color and a gene for eye color. However, the difference might be that maybe you got the gene for blue eyes from mom and the gene for brown eyes from dad. Keep in mind, however, that eye color or color in general usually isn't a great example. So a better example for me to have used was probably something like um, Hitchhiker's Thumb. And um, we could say a straight thumb because there's lots of factors that affect color. Hitchhiker's thumb or straight thumb. I, for example, have a fairly straight thumb, okay? And if this top portion of my digit was more bent, then I would have a hitchhiker's thumb, but it's really not, okay? Um, same thing, you could also have alleles for color blindness. And this would actually be found specifically on our sex chromosomes. So over here you have our homologous chromosomes. They are single in this side. And over here they have gone through replication. And so you have our doubled chromosomes. And really this is just the same sequence of genes but the form is now different. And each individual chromosome here can now go into a separate um, cell. And there are gonna be some differences that occur in cells that are going to be skin cells or somatic cells and skins that are gonna be gametes or sex cells. But moving on to the next slide, because you want to talk about the basics of cell division, the basics of mitosis and the cell cycle today. And so doubling of chromosomes occur right before cell division. So we're literally going to double the amount of DNA. And when we talk about the doubling of chromosomes, we're not... It's not going to be the number of chromosomes that are doubled. For example, when we double chromosomes, we'll have 46 single chromosomes become 46 doubled chromosomes. We would never say that I have 92 chromosomes. 92 would be wrong, okay? And so all of this is going to occur right before cell division. And it's actually also going to occur simultaneously. The copying and the coiling of the chromosomes will occur simultaneously. So a couple things that you'll see happening. First, you have your initial cell. And this cell is going to be what's no in a phase known as interphase. And specifically, the G1 portion of interphase. In the G1 phase of, interf of interphase, a cell is going to have what's known as euchromatin. Okay. And remember, EU just means true, so we're talking about true chromatin or true DNA. And chromatin is just going to be your relaxed DNA. So the DNA is still a double helix, but it's not bunched up in a chromosome. And when your DNA is relaxed, this is going to be easy access for coding proteins. So in the normal life phase of a cell, In the normal life phase of a cell, the DNA is relaxed. It's not coiled up as a chromosome. And this allows the proteins and enzymes to very easily access the code to make new proteins. Okay. 
Now, the other thing, however, is that your coiled chroma, your coiled chromatin can also be known as sometimes heterochromatin. And heterochromatin is actually going to be a section that is unneeded, or we probably could have said not needed, that can be coiled. So within your chromatin, you have heterochromatin. Chromatin is a section that is not needed for the protein code, and it could stay coiled up, but it doesn't have to be. And so in here, we have our DNA is coiled, and some of that could be heterochromatin. And in the next cell, this is actually going to um, end what is known as our S phase. So here you have your DNA. It's normally relaxed. We're actually going to receive a signal. We're going to get a signal, and the signal is going to tell us to copy our DNA. And so now we're in the S phase synthesis phase. The DNA here, you can actually see that they're kind of in pairs. You have one, two, three, four pairs. You're going to end the S phase, and when you end the S phase, in this picture, you'll see that you have four chromosomes that are doubled. Um, and these, these cells will go on to the G2 phase which is going to get them to mitosis. And this is kind of that transitioning phase. G2 is a transition phase. In these cells, before we move on to mitosis, we're going to see that we have two pairs of each. And they're all going to be doubled chromosomes. Whenever you see in an image um, chromosomes and you want to know how many chromosomes are in the cell, you'll actually count it using that centromere. So count chromosome by number of centromeres. Centromere. And we'll talk about this a little more, but this is kind of a brief overview of what happens in order for us to get to mitosis. And so here you have the normal functioning of a cell, and cells are all going to have to receive a signal to divide. So when you receive a signal to divide, basically the cell is just going to follow directions. And a common example is going to be a signal known as FGF2. FGF2, common signal. This, this image that you see is the cell cycle. And the cell cycle is basically the life of a cell. And it is highly regulated. So what do you see or what do you need to be able to understand out of this image here? First thing you should know this is that we have a couple labels, interphase, G1, S, G2, and mitosis. And so what you're going to see here in interphase is that this encompasses most of the life of the cell. So interphase is the longest um, portion. In the G1 phase, G is going to stand for growth. So G1 is going to be our initial growth of a cell. And within that initial growth, a couple of things happen. As the cell grows, it's going to lose some of that um, surface area to volume. 
ratio. And so that ratio is going to decrease. So G1 is normally starting with a normal cell. And then you actually get a signal to divide. A lot of times this signal is going to bind to a receptor. And again, it's highly regulated. Hopefully there's a couple things that you remember about the S phase as well as the G2 and mitosis itself. Take a minute to look back over these images. Um, try to try to remember what to, what happens during DNA synthesis or DNA replication. What happens during the G2? Think about what are the steps that occur during mitosis. And we'll finish up the rest of these notes in class.